Hello and welcome to episode 49 of the Cloud Computing for the C-Suite show with Brad Nelson and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Lenticum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show, we'll be talking about as the cloud comes of age, it's been used as the jumping off point for many digital transformation efforts within companies, especially as it moves outside the data center. Here are Forrester's five predictions for cloud computing in 2019. Number one, enterprise spending will increase. Number two, containers, Kubernetes and serverless transforming core enterprise applications. Number three, new approaches to private cloud. Number four, platform as a service strategies will consider experiences over time. And number five, software as a service based industry systems will gain popularity. Hi, Dave. It's great, great to have you on another C Suite show this week. Yeah, it's great to be here. And you did a great job reading us. Didn't blub anything. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Well, the opening question for the show, then, I guess, uh, based on those five points, is do you actually see those as accurate? And if so, what else do we actually see happening in 2019, Dave? We need that magic crystal ball of yours. So I don't know if you've got some beads there or something so, <laughs> or some tea leaves. <laughs> you know, it's funny. This is a time of year when PR firms reach out to me um, talking about some ex executive that has predictions for... Uh, uh, 2019, and they want to share them with me. Um, and they're always very self-serving and, and kind of inaccurate. And the thing is, the predictions are always very general and kind of no duh. Uh, I, I, I think some of these things really kind of fall in that category. I mean, enterprise spending will increase, of course. I mean, it goes up every year. We're in a good economy. I, I think that's, uh, you know, kind of a, you know, this just in fire is hot, you know, kind of a uh, prediction. Um, I thought that was kind of cute to lead it off. So I'd like to see something a little better from uh, Forrester. The container stuff and the serverless stuff, I think will um, will not transform for enterprise applications. It'll just enhance them. So in other words, provide a different platform that we can start moving off in a different, more productive direction. If we need portability, we need the ability to um, uh, containerize things for certain reason. The fact of the matter is that legacy systems, you know, whether they're modern legacy systems or older legacy systems, cost a lot and are very difficult to containerize. And there's a cost associated with that. And you know, certainly I'm seeing that out in the market right now. So the uh, Global 2000 companies are pushing back on containers for the existing workloads to basically containerize them just to make them portable. But they are doing their net new stuff in containers and they are doing their net new stuff with serverless computing with things like Lambda and, fun and Microsoft Functions. And so we're going to see a great deal of growth next year. I, I wouldn't say it's going to transform core enterprise applications. It's going to have an impact without that much of an impact. Uh, new approaches to private cloud, well, there better be, because I, I haven't seen much interest in private cloud in the last uh, two or three years. And it's kind of morphed into the fact that we're just calling legacy applications private cloud. I mean, what's passing as a private cloud is kind of very funny based on what was defined you know, by NIST, um, you know, uh, back in 2008. And we do have uh, Azure Stack coming, which is the Microsoft private cloud version of Azure. And we do have some, um, you know, interesting kind of um, on-premise things that Google's doing, especially around Kubernetes and some of the serverless stuff that's coming up. But I think that ultimately it's going to be a very tactical approach that people are never, aren't going to use unless there's a, absolute reason for doing so. There's never a security excuse to um, force people into leveraging a private cloud. I think that's uh, you know something people are admitting right now. A lot of work is on the streets where people are in essence porting applications from private cloud-based systems such, such as the OpenStack distributions into the public cloud. And the fact of the matter is, is that private clouds just can't keep up in the feature and functions that public cloud have. I mean, you have, you know, thousands of services that you can leverage within AWS that you know, are typically not going to be available on a private cloud. And people want to leverage those services, the database systems, security systems, governance systems, monitoring management, those sorts of things. And you're kind of on your own when you're deploying a private cloud, they're very difficult to do. So hopefully we'll see some new approaches, but I think the new approaches are really going to be just very tactical stuff. It's going to, still going to be a fairly shrinking market. Platforms as service strategies will consider experiences over time. Um, well, I, I think that PaaS, you know, is going to have a play, um, but with serverless computing and, and container-based computing largely living on infrastructure as a service-based systems, 
uh, it's going to struggle a bit. And you are going to see uh, the, um, uh, you know, some of the uh, this this cloud foundry stuff, you know, is taking off. Some people are using that with good success, and I think that's we're going to have to build on the success the success of that going forward. The software as a service based industry systems will gain popularity. Um, you know, they already are. It's, you know, it's funny. It's, it's um, you know, I tell this to the press all the time. They, they think I'm lying. I said the majority of the cloud computing revenue out there is software as a service. It's not infrastructure as a service and it's not uh, platform as a service uh, because they're interested in Amazon and Microsoft. And they're really kind of focused on selling uh, um, infrastructure as a service stock. But the Salesforce.coms, but the 2,000 other software as a service players out there, uh, they're selling CRM and even you know bond you know bail bonds management systems and things like that, or really the most you know largest use of cloud computing to a large extent. Last time I looked, and I may be shrinking in market share, you know relative to infrastructure as a service, but it's already gaining popularity. It's already out there as the leader in the cloud computing space. We just don't talk about it because it's not cool anymore. Because software as a service was kind of invented with Salesforce, you know, back in the. Uh, late 90s um, and infrastructure as a service really didn't come around as an emerging you know kind of offering until you know five or six years later so we, we kind of view it as legacy cloud um, but many uh, organizations are very successful software as a service and I think it's going to gain popularity because it's been gaining popularity for the next five years so I'm, I pretty much I don't disagree with any of these things some of them are just very obvious and uh, some things I, I would dial back on just because it's a uh, not necessarily going to happen next year, just kind of based on the patterns. Yeah, no, great, Dave. I'm glad you put your, your views on there. And I think you, you made some great points there. And, and, you know, it's a bit of a shame to a certain degree. And I know, like you said, a lot of PR companies are spinning 2019 and, and doing those predictions and coming to you for those insights, etc. But it's a bit disappointing that Forrest has released something that is a bit generic it is a bit obvious it is kind of like you say it's just uh it doesn't really give the specifics that you've kind of hoped from say foresters really um you know without coming too heavy down on, on foresters we, we we know people at foresters and that's all good uh, but you know it's one of those things like you said you, you'd like it to be less generic more specific and and really homing in on a on a, on a marketplace where there's there is so much happening because uh, forgive me, but I didn't see edge computing mentioned there, and we've just done a a, a great show on edge computing uh, for the Australia show. So if anyone's watching this show now, you want to skip back and watch the Australia show. We covered some cool stuff on edge computing, which wasn't just for Australia, admittedly. It's kind of a, a worldwide thing, the edge. Um, so uh, yeah, it, it's one of those things, isn't it? It's um, what, what's your what's your view on 2019, Dave? What do you see as the top three things? I mean, we're gonna we're gonna move on to your top three tips. Uh, in, in a moment, but what do you what do you see as your, your top thing for 2019 that you're really excited about? Well, I think it's the ability to kind of manage the complexity. I think that cloud's causing us. I mean, we're not necessarily uh, um, retiring the existing legacy systems as we're moving systems into the cloud, and so we're ending up with um, you know going from 2,000 workloads to you know 2,500 workloads to 3,000 workloads that are in a very complex distributed architecture with different legacy systems and cloud-based systems and mobile-based systems and IoT-based systems. So the ability to kind of get a handle on managing those uh, in a in a way that allows them to scale. In other words, you can build more systems, add more systems, extracting yourself away from the complexity. I think is going to be a big focus in 2019 and 2020. Uh, also, I think we're going to get more pragmatic about you know cloud computing in general, um, in terms of what moves into the cloud and how to triage existing workloads. I think we've been very bad at you know picking workloads that should move to the cloud, just kind of based on the fact we have an emotional response to that workload versus uh, the patterns of it and its ability to be successful in the cloud. Um, the ability to also turn existing um, migrated applications into um, Cloud native thing, net native features. We we did the whole lift and shift, which which I was kind of uh, suspicious of, you know, a few years ago. And now that we have a lot of the applications that are running in the cloud, they're not optimized for everything that the cloud can do. They're not leveraging the native security services, governance services, performance management services, things like that. And so we're going to have to spend a lot of time in going off to those systems and refactoring them and make making them cloud native. Um, so that's three. I mean, there's a, there's a bunch more. If you go out to my InfoWorld blog, I think I covered a few last month that you know it did have specifics in it. And by the way, one of the reasons not to put specifics in these predictions is because it's printed out on the internet. It stays here forever. 
and those may show up in your mailbox, you know, in a year's time, you know, with the, ha ah, you were wrong, you know, uh, you need to resign, <laughs> that kind of stuff. And, and so it's, it's taking a risk and being a little bit more courageous. I think that they need to do that and they actually get specifics of what's going to happen. And I think it, the, the things are fairly well understood and where the trends are going. You know, now we're in the 2018, complexity is on the rise. Um, people are typically suspicious about cloud costs. You know, security is always going to be a popular thing, but where do we take it to the next level? So need we to work on that problem coming forward. Um, training and the talent shortage is the big one. You know, I think I wrote about that in the uh, InfoWorld blog last month. I think we're going to be hindered not necessarily because we we lack the knowledge and lack the R and D, we just lack the people who are able to go out and you know solve these problems for us. We just don't have enough creative, innovative people to go around within these global two thousand companies that are able to assist them to take things to the next level. So it's fairly it's fairly obvious, but I think you can actually get into the details on what's obvious, and you can look at some actionable things that you can you know some actions you can take to act, in essence solve this issue before it starts popping up. Uh, next year within the enterprises. And I think that the good thing for the enterprises to do right now is to be proactive. So don't focus on this that you see here. These are, you know, you know, take them or leave them for whatever, what they're worth, but, you know, get into the big hard problems that you're gonna have to solve. You know, refactoring existing applications, that's a hard problem, not necessarily a sexy problem. It's gonna take a lot of work and a lot of time to make it happen. The complexity issue, again, hard, you know, very ugly problem, but we're gonna have to figure out how to solve it. So get on that stuff. And I think once you get that solved, you'll be able to get to the you know, sweet and meaty parts of cloud computing. We're able to make the money. We're gonna to have to get through this uh, this kind of gauntlet first of the complexity of the app development stuff and you know, everything we just talked about. Yeah, you're right. On so many points, you're right on that. I think it's just a way to start, to be honest with you, because uh, everything you said, I think, resonates with so many people that are watching this or listening to this that are, you know, knee, knee deep in this uh, industry. So, uh, yeah, I mean, one of the points that obviously resonates quite heavily with myself and, and Nelson Hilliard, the company, is that, you know, digging deep to find the true talent that's going to, you know, shine and actually, you know, be a part of that, uh, reinforcing the research and development that companies, you know, invest millions into, uh, that they're, they're actually finding the right staff in the right time frame in the right budget that are going to produce the outcomes that the actual organization want so yeah that's that's key to us that's one of our main objectives really that's the why behind what we do is to make sure that you know that the business is not suffering from uh, you know faltering in its direction of producing the outcomes it needs by not being able to find the key people so you know we love to roll our sleeves up and uh, dig deep and uh, speak to those speak to those potential people so but great points there and uh, yeah I think it moves us on nicely to your top three tips there Dave um, if you'd uh, if you haven't already kind of shared them in uh, in, in your last uh, speech <laughs> it'd be great yeah the obvious one is don't rely on other people's predictions no matter if they're research firms or your friends or um, you know uh, you know even me I, I think that ultimately you need to figure out what's going to be relevant to you as a person and as a company and your issues are really going to be known to you based on you understanding what your requirements are and what you're going to be facing in 2019. Um, you, people need to understand that before they can actually make a prediction as to what's relevant to you. And I think you're looking at other people's predictions and trying to make those as your action items, you know, in board meetings and things like that, you're going off the wrong direction. It's going to have to be customized for your particular needs. Focus on your requirements and not what the industry is doing. We just talked about that. And again, um, you may not be one of those uh, uh, folks, those, those uh, companies that is able to get benefit from container-based computing and serverless computing and things like that. And so therefore don't focus on it. If you can't get a benefit on it in 2019, go off and solve some other issues, security, governance, you know, process management, man cloud ops, DevOps, all these things are really hard things to solve and you might as well get to work on them right now. Then focus on, on the metrics to figure out your own success. And so one of the things that I always tell my clients is before we go off and you know solve a big honking problem and everything we just talked about is a big honking problem, let's put what the metrics together is how we're going to find success. In the case of complexity, you're able to you know, uh, get systems in place and change systems in, in one week versus one month you know, as, as the current status, and that, that equals success and it, how much value is able to be derived from that particular benefit. And how much agility comes in, how many points do we get for agility, time to market stuff. So figure out your own custom metrics that really kind of define what success in your space. 
Great top tips. Thank you so much, Dave, and thanks for being part of the C-Suite show this week. Very insightful, and here's to the future. It's always a pleasure. I hope I live to be uh, live uh, in 2019. Hopefully I make it after first year, we'll see. It's great for having you on the C-Suite show. And look, everyone, you can get Dave on Twitter, which is at Dave Linthicum. Oh, sorry, at David Linthicum, beg your pardon. Uh, and I'm on Twitter as well, which is at Nelson underscore Hilliard. Uh, this is on uh, iTunes and Stitcher. So if you've got an Android phone, check out Stitcher for podcasts because uh, we're on both as well. So check that out. Make sure you subscribe. Obviously, you can listen to us if you don't want to watch us talking. We understand. We don't take it. We don't take it too personally, you know. But um, you know, you can watch us and listen to us. Uh, we're on all the other social media platforms as well, so you can come and join us on Instagram, Facebook, obviously YouTube and Twitter and things like that. Um, and Dave writes some great blogs as well. So check out in the description box below. We've got links to everything. So we've got links to all our latest blogs, all the social media things, everything like that. Dave's got some courses as well, uh, which are really cool. So there's some links below uh, in. Uh, for David's courses run through lynda.com uh, so check those out and remember to like subscribe and share these videos with your friends and your colleagues we love all that support and building this community it's really important uh, and when you do subscribe click the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the future videos that we do uh, and yeah so thanks for watching everyone and uh, until next week